A very good morning, my dear respected colleagues. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera, salam madani. Okay, boleh tinggal semua? Boleh. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning everybody uh, that are present online, especially to all our respective colleagues, our honorable deans, our directors, our deputy deans of uh, academics and international, uh, especially invited by our Prof. TNCA, Prof. Sharil, uh, our e-learning coordinators, our technology enabled learning mentors, uh, respected academic staff from UMS, and our colleagues from also other university awam are with us and also especially to our panel of uh, speakers. Good morning and welcome. Uh, this webinar talk show, uh, according to our invited speaker, Dr. No Fasilina, she called this as a talk show, is entitled Enhancing Academic Productivity Using Generative AI, Artificial Intelligence, the Tips and the Strategies. So this webinar, by the way, is organized by the team PEP from the Center for E-Learning, uh, PEP Center for Pusat e Pembelajaran, uh, UMS. We sincerely hope, ladies and gentlemen, we sincerely hope that this session will answer many doubts and many concerns on the benefits, the opportunities, even the threats, the weaknesses of generative AI to especially academic lecturers, and in particular, to our students. Our students have been using it to support and to assist their, teach, their learning. So how should be our position? We have a lot of concern. And we hope that this session will be able to clarify, uh, especially with our Pakar AI, Dr. Nor Fasilina with us. So we hope at the end of the session, everyone will be mutually motivated, mutually inspired, we use generative AI to enhance our academic productivity in all aspects, whether it be teaching and learning, whether it be research, whether it be even for our personal use. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, some uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, during the course of uh, sharing, please feel free to comment or ask any question in the chat box. Okay. Uh, keep your mic mute all the time. During there will be a session called open mic, and that's where Dr. Nofasina will tell you, okay, this is an open mic session. Then at that time you can unmute to comment and to ask question. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, Inche Aminuddin and Point Eugenia, our coordinators for blended learning and training and MOOC and OER. They will be helping to read out the relevant comments or questions from the chat box for our panel to provide their responses. Or you can choose, of course, to unmute, to bring out whatever that you have typed there. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to very briefly introduce our panel of speakers with us. Uh, this morning, we are very, very fortunate uh, to get hold of Dr. Noor Fasilina Mohammad Sharaf who is an associate professor at the Department of Computer Science, Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology in UPM, University of Putra, Malaysia. Uh, she is very busy and she's now in fact away and she is now, uh, thank you for making the effort to be online with us. Okay. Dr. No Fasilina, main research interests are in artificial intelligence and data science. And she has conducted many uh, seminars and uh, workshops related to generative AI for higher education. So because of this, uh, she is, in fact, the authority considering the use of uh, AI, especially generative AI, for higher education. So we're very, very fortunate. By the way, her mantra in teaching is that experiential learning and blended learning are the best method to learn and teach. At the same time, of course, she incorporate AI. Uh, by the way, 
very important, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Noor Fasilina is a panel member in producing the MQA advisory note on the use of generative AI for higher education. So again, I say, uh, she is the authority to help clarify all our doubts. Thank you. We have also Professor Matia Dr. Azwan bin Awang. Uh, he's the Dean the faculty, from the Faculty of Sustainable Agriculture in Sandakan Campus, uh, UMS. Uh, he teaches courses such as the genetic agriculture biotechnology, plant molecular biology, and he earned all his uh, basic uh, first degree, master degree, doctor degree from Japan, Nigata University. So his research area is all related to uh, agriculture, especially cocoa, but he incorporates a lot of new technology in his teaching and learning. So he uh, used to tell me, you know, that he's always looking for new emerging technologies to improve his work, especially also to his students. And one of them, of course, is ChatGPT. So welcome and thank you, Dr. Azwan. Yeah. And we have a point, Safia Binti Masraka uh, from the Center for Promotion of Knowledge and Language Learning in Labuan campus. So today we have a three campus are interconnected. She teaches a media and society in the liberal arts cluster. She is a freelance writer since 2014. She's a writer. And she's also a certified uh, digital business developer. So thank you, Juan Safia. Uh, thank you, Dr. Azwan. And uh, please remember that this talk show will comprise of two rounds. Uh, there will be a sharing by Dr. Nor Faslina. Uh, they'll be sharing by uh, Dr. Azwan and uh, Pon Safia. And then there will be an open mic session. Uh, during the time, Dr. Noor Fasilina will tell us this is now an open mic session. And that is where you can uh, comment and ask questions for Dr. Noor Fasilina and the panel to respond accordingly. So with this uh, announcement, I shall now pass the mic to Professor Matnia, Dr. Noor Fasilina, uh, to take over from here until the end. Dr. Noor Fasilina, over to you. Sure, thank you very much, Prof. Fong. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. I would like to say, um, invite everybody and welcome everybody for coming to this session. Uh, hopefully, we can somehow make this online session a talk show, an online talk show um, mm. for your information. Hello. Sudah expired. Okay, nanti kita uh, mute kan eh. Okay. Uh, because uh, I, I imagine that um, many of you might have heard about ChatGPT. If not, you using yourself, maybe you have heard from others. And maybe we have also attended uh, some sharing um, sessions regarding ChatGPT. Today, uh, we have another two speakers uh, besides me, but somehow I couldn't see them in this um, tiles. Uh, not sure. Let us call our other speaker. Yes, Dr. Azwan. Hello, Dr. Azwan. Is yes, WhatsApp around? Hello. Ah, okay, nice, nice. Uh, thank you very much. So if if you know me, you must know that I am really an informal person. <laughs> I think it is uh, very good for us to make this session as a, a knowledge sharing session, exchange um, information, uh, and so that we can learn together. Uh, for everybody's benefit, we are going to uh, have um, several sessions, several rounds, slots. So, uh, as Prof. Fong have highlighted just now, we're going to have open mic sessions. But I do actually welcome you to interrupt us. I hope you will be ready to also contribute to this. Okay, let me uh, share first uh, the slide that I have prepared. Okay, so this is the title that we have today, Enhancing Academic Productivity Using Generative AI. To me, this is a tall order. How? Uh, like Prof. Fong, uh, give the mandate just now. Make sure that at the end of the session today, all UMS and, and participants today can be inspired on how to use generative AI. 
So we use the term generative AI because we cover beyond ChatGPT. A bit of information about myself, uh, I'm at the Department of Computer Science, but uh, just now I, I realized that maybe some people would think that, oh, because she is in computer science and she's, uh, her area is also AI, and she's also in the National AI Task Force. So that is why she can use ChatGPT quite smoothly. But I wish that we can together prove that wrong, that uh, ChatGPT, because of the move on democratizing AI, so this term, democratizing AI, make sure that AI is for everyone. The outline, you will have an introduction to generative AI, some examples uh, on generative AI usage in TNL. So we have listed for you here three examples and more examples on generative AI for research purposes before we go with conclusion. Allow me to start and then I'll pass to Dr. Azwan and also Puan Safia. Okay, generative AI is a game changer. So World Economic Forum calls that generative AI is now a game changer. And this was released in January 9, 2023. Because for your information, in November 2022, just within five days, ChatGPT has printed all along and has beaten all other familiar apps. Maybe Netflix to you is already very gempak kan? Kalau tengok TikTok. Talks, we, we see at Instagram, but if you see here, before this Instagram and Spotify were, were the top two. But because of ChatGPT arise, within five days, they're able to reach one million users. On the left side, um, I highlight that there are many kinds of tools available right now. And the content type, meaning if you look at this, maybe this is still very unfamiliar to you. Uh, but please be known that over the time, we are going to use more and more of these tools. So in our position as an educator, as a researcher, it is part of our due to be able to introduce this and facilitate how our students are going to use this uh, safely. Okay, so last night I thought, macam mana we want to show that AI ni actually not very new. I bet many of you have used this kind of filters. Last night, ni last night ni, pakai telekok tengah tunggu Ishak. Then I realized, oh, actually I'm going to look like my mother. This is how my mother looks. But this is really not how I look uh, when I was younger. But uh, you can see that TikTok itself has many filters. And we have been using AI for so long. But we did not call it AI. And this is indeed generative AI in TikTok. On the right side, so these three lovely... Uh, heart melting girls, uh, if I can use the word heart melting girls. I took this from Mazlan Abbas website. He is an avid user of an app called Mid Journey. So how to come out with this very beautiful um, illustration. And this indeed has sparked many issues and many talk around the world saying that how AI would be able to replace uh, some jobs. Uh, including designers. But in my opinion, uh, this is actually AI coming up with a new genre. If you think about techno, music techno, okay? so AI is coming up as a new uh, genre as well. For your information, of course, uh, it is not slowing down. And there is a boom. And you have seen here many applications. If you see in the middle, ni Pandai, this is a local company, a startup company, Pandai, and if you are a parent maybe or, or working at a school or you know that your school of your children have used these apps. And these apps is um, being used to let the students to do latte to be and it is AI based. Uh, kalau you see in the middle here, this is part of a video that I developed in a micro-credentials course that I created. AI for Educator. At the end of my session, I will share with you the link and it is free. The course is free. Please feel free to go in and enroll yourself. In February, so uh, a bit of history, how I come out to be uh, somehow uh, sharing, be involved in several sessions on ChatGPT. In November, um, my student uh, bought FYP at that time. 
So the student, at first I tak tahu uh, about this chat GPT. We went out for breakfast uh, dekat satu kedai, dekat dekat sedang ada satu kedai nama dia Satay Tujuh Pagi. If you are around, look it up. This is a really cool and, and nice restaurant to go hang out. So I was sitting with my student. She said she's still drafting her thesis. She asked whether she can use chat GPT. Then I asked her, what is chat GPT? And this student is already, I would say that he's uh, among the cream students. Uh, and and coincidentally, she is also uh, my mentee. So this student, I know that she can already write well. They kata, oh, doctor, you haven't used chat GPT. And this was in November. It was just really released. Oh, yeah, ke? it can generate uh, text. Tapi around the world, uh, some uh, universities and some countries have already banned it. So then I go back and I, I, I tried out. Oh, then I know and I start to appreciate chat GPT. And because at that time, I was at the Center for Academic Development at UPM. I am now, um, I have finished my contract about three weeks ago. But at that time, I realized that I need to do something to let uh, and to alert the academic world, especially local and in, in UPM, that how we can use and facilitate chat GPT to be used responsibly. And hence, we have come up with this guide. In uh, February, we had the first um, session on how ChatGPT can be used in um, teaching and learning. And from there, we come up with this another mantra. We shouldn't turn a blind eye to it. And we need to do something. We need to redesign the activities and assessments in our teaching. And this is a disruption, actually. So what's next could be on the horizon. We don't know. So it is more important for us to facilitate. Many issues have come out, like uh, it's false and misleading, um, it can be a disruption of labor market, it brings us some ethical concerns, authenticity and ownership and reliability of intelligence. So all of these have been ironed out since November, and we now see that many people have transformed by using and taking advantage of that GPT. So the keyword is let us take advantage on this special tool to make ourselves more productive. In uh, February, I did this quick um, survey. So 33 people responses at, uh, responded at that time. They said that um, ChatGPT have said them, uh, have helped them, but they know that whatever that is being generated, need them to edit before it is being used. And this is also one of the spirit, spirit that I would like to take moving forward in our session today, that ChatGPT or generative AI is not a solution. It is a tool to make ourselves better. Let us see what are the usage of ChatGPT uh, to the respondents that I had at that time. Among of those that uh, were responded, uh, some of them also help to ulang kaji subjek anak-anak sekolah. You know why? Because right now, uh, for us to understand our kids, kan, dah ada kebat, kan? So we can use that also to help us to understand concepts. So why I highlight this? To indicate that we now have even more inclusivity towards assessing knowledge. So how do we use ChatGPT to come up with this, in my session uh, and also sharing by two other speakers, we would show how ChatGPT can be used for us to prompt, similar like how we use uh, how we use uh, Google. So there are many also comments that inovasi ini masih terlalu muda, but this was in February. But if you see, many of these are positive, but on the negative side, some people are worried that the students will be lazy and they wouldn't be good students. I will share with you um, the outcome, my observation after finishing um, one semester usage of ChatGPT. For your information, the UNESCO have released this guidance for policymakers in AI and education. It emphasized the importance of humanizing and democratizing fair and responsible AI for education. We need to focus on how AI can be leveraged to enhance education. Our task also to see how AI can be best exploited for the common good in education, 
how to ensure the ethical, inclusive, and equitable use of AI in education, and how to prepare humans to live and work with AI. So if you look at this, now you, you realize that our role is now going to facilitate. And this has brought towards um, one of the uh, recent advisory note released by MQA. This is uh, the advisory note number two for this year that um, MQA has released, and it is on generative AI usage in higher education. In this advisory note, it highlights about the potential and risk of how AI can be used with quality. So basically, antara cara penggunaan aplikasi is to menyokong pembelajaran kendiri. So this is to support the students to help self-learning. How? For them to be able to use ChatGPT and get responses, get answers, and to be able to let the students to improve. So MQA says that generative AI can be used to support students to improve their assignment quality by curation, by adaptation, and optimizing information resources, as well as Membolehkan staff, akademik dan pelajar menjalankan proses PDP in interactive, immersive and authentic. Menyediakan pelajar dengan kemahiran teknologi yang sesuai. And there is also a precaution for us. Kebergantungan yang tinggi atau tidak terkawal boleh mengundang beberapa risiko. Antaranya kemerosotan pelbagai kemahiran seperti menulis, merumus, menilai dan menyelesaikan masalah. So if we look at this, this is a very critical uh, precaution for us to be able to take um, responses. So if we look further in this advisory note, saranan kepada staff akademik. Teknologi perlu dilihat sebagai pemudah cara. Uh, peranan staff adalah penting bagi memastikan proses PDP yang efektif dan berintegriti. Dalam hal ini, pembelajaran secara fleksibel dan personalised boleh disokong bagi memperkasa peranan staff akademik. So it is never to say that now we can use AI to replace educators. So hopefully in this perspective, it is also a reminder for us. So now that we know this is a call for us to take charge. So how we can do it. So hopefully in our session today for UMS, we will show how all of us can transform to be role models to our students. Because we need to be able to adapt in our teaching approach, uh, learning approach and also this, the assessment. Sebagai contoh, memberi penekanan kepada aktiviti berbentuk praktikal dan penyelesaian masalah serta penggunaan pentaksiran alternatif dan autentik yet memastikan pelajar boleh mempamerkan penguasaan hasil pembelajaran dengan pendekatan pengajaran, pembelajaran dan pentaksiran bersesuaian Dan staf akademik perlu memberi bimbingan dengan cara yang sesuai, selamat, bertanggungjawab dan berintegriti. Uh, okay, so excuse me, somehow there is a knock on the door. Um, I ignore it. So uh, the use of ChatGPT in teaching and learning. Uh, sorry, let me just quickly check it. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so how ChatGPT can be used in teaching and learning? As a continuation from the advisory note, let us see how specifically ChatGPT can benefit us. Why here I highlight about ChatGPT? Because right now, ChatGPT is the most used generative AI for teaching and learning, and people have also benefited it in many other academic purposes. We can use ChatGPT to create lesson plans, to answer questions, to classify text, to get creative and fresh ideas, or get advice for refined thoughts, to create rubrics, ha, to translate sentence pun boleh, to compose write up ha, pun boleh, summarize text, text completion, get generated text, kalau kita nak permudahkan, we can specify 7 years old ke, 27 years old ke, we can do it. Okay, uh, this is another um, information from 
the UNESCO. Uh, can I quickly uh, take you for a quick demo? If you are first time, please search chat.openai.com. Okay, chat.openai.com. And then, uh, wait there, let me do again. Is there a way for us to use this? Okay, can we do uh, some reactions, please? If you have used uh, ChatGPT before, please put thumbs up. If you haven't, please put thumbs down. Can I see some reactions, please? So I know the pace for us to go. All right, thank you very much. Uh, can we use the chat? to for you to please um, yeah i can share the slide don't worry uh, please use the chat to uh, type in what you have used it for uh, for those of you who have used it can you please write in the chat what you have used it for and if you are new uh, you can follow me i will take you for a quick demo on how to use it Please go to chat.openai.com and press enter. Okay, chat chat.openai.com. You would see this interface. Okay, maybe it will ask you also to log in if it is first time. So please feel free to log in. And then you would see this kind of interface. And are you seeing the same interface with me? May I know? Can you see GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 at the top? Yeah, anyone? Have you gotten this already? Chat.openai.com. Okay, so hopefully you are seeing the same interface. All right. So you can see this box, send a message. Please type in, let's say we want to um, do a lesson plan. So, or let's say we want to build a self-instructional materials for our course. So let us type this, generate a self-instructional materials for um introduction please specify your topics and the way that you are writing it can be as if you are conversing with it so as you see uh, this is also one of the great feature about chat gpt because if you compare with other tools i'm going to share with you about four other tools today towards the end of our session you would see that ChatGPT number one, it's very fast. Imagine us asking our research assistant to find this information for us. Number one, not necessarily the student will be able to really get what we have in our mind. And number two, it is long. So imagine this is very similar to how our student might have just copy our instruction or assignment or question and put it in the ChatGPT. So in this situation, ladies and gentlemen, what should we do? In my experience, we need to also firstly check with this question that I'm giving to my student, what will be the answer that ChatGPT gives? Is it too easy for them? Am I going to be able to really capture what I expected my students to be able to attain? <coughs> so from all of this, we would know and if you if you read the responses, it is very good English. And this is also one of the best reason why we need to use ChatGPT because it can automate paraphrasing, literature search. And if you look at the chat, wow, this is fantastic. We see that people have used it for getting an idea to start writing, for a topic to teach, to create lesson plan, to do literature search. So indeed. It is a tool to help us as educators. It is um, equally available and free tool that our students can use it. 
and nowadays I always ask my student, especially the postgraduate students, somehow what I observe is that my postgraduate students are slower in using this kind of uh, apps compared to the undergrad students. So maybe because of the uh, age generation or because uh, for the undergrad students, they, they uh, are in a bigger group and easier for them to share uh, stuff. So they are transforming even faster. So again, this slide is to remind us, if we look at this, UNESCO said that the world citizens need to understand what the impact of AI might be. And this was in 2022, before ChatGPT boom. What AI can and cannot do, when it is useful, when its use should be questioned and how to steer it for the public good. This requires everyone to achieve some level of competency with regard to AI, including knowledge, understanding, skills and value orientation, which are all called as AI literacy. And this term AI literacy comprises of data literacy and algorithm literacy. And imagine, I hope I have enough time to show how ChatGPT can help everybody to start developing their AI models and machine learning models despite their area, not necessarily if they are from computer science area. And because of this, why I show this slide is just to tell that many other institutions are also transforming as well. And Majlis Professor Negara, with the uh, collaboration of Magnetic and Mepta, are preparing and also MQA are now preparing guideline and the national TV, TV Tiga, are also looking at this matter. And they know that in the country, we are transforming uh, towards this. Because there are many positive effects. Although you might concern that there are negative effects, but if we read and really open our eyes and ears and we look around, we might be able to sense that AI is going to be even more immersive and going to be even more pervasive, going everywhere. So the positive effect, let's look at it, is that we are going to have generation. We, our, as educator, our job is to produce quality students who should be able to communicate clearly, coherently and confidently. And not anymore for the students to stop hiding behind lengthy reports with pages of appendices. And we need to truly think, and we also have to transform how to condense and articulate in a dialogue that can evolve their thoughts. And it is more important than ever to look towards experiential learning, to switch to life problems that are evolving in class and stop feeding students problems from the past because the tools are just at, within their fingertips. Let them to learn with the assistance of AI, but our job is to focus on hands-on experiential learning opportunities and focus on assessments that is based on creation. Because we know in the hierarchy of taxonomy, if the students can produce something, they become innovators. So how our job can facilitate them to be able to reach that. We need to allow them and facilitate them to work together beyond merely forming groups and splitting up the work. I think this is very classical. When we assign students uh, to work in a group, they only do certain section. They did not do cross-sectional. And when there is assignment or even going for interview, they couldn't answer because they, they couldn't understand deeply. Mainly because there is not enough time, even uh, with their peer students, they don't know how to convince and collaborate and communicate with, with each other. So with using ChatGPT and other generative AI, it can facilitate them to be able to express better. And imagine the students who are very highly inquisitive mind, be able to demonstrate professionalism, maturity and respect, and we can shift to a more dialogue-based approach to learning. In my experience in my class, when I do not know something or when the student says something, I ask them, what does ChatGPT say? So they will search it and immediately I will ask them, so based on this response, what do you think? 
Do you agree? Do you disagree? Show me why, how. So our classroom is now changed to be more of Socratic style to be able to let the students to uh, exchange. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite our speakers, co-speakers, Puan Safia and Associate Professor Dr. Azwan to share about their experience practicing and using ChatGPT in their class. I would like to invite them to firstly introduce themselves and then share about their experience and wisdom words. Uh, who wants to go first? Silakan. Okay, all right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning everybody. Thank you Dr. Nafadilina. Uh, as probably I'm, I consider myself as a uh, um, conservative, <laughs> right? And uh, when first this chat GPT come out, so people are you know, talking about it and how this uh, technology, you know, can they said destroy universities. So I go and check by myself and then I play around because initially that I need to know uh, the technology before before the student knows better than me. So as I uh, consider that probably I use more chat GPT uh, like uh, you guys as well. I see that mostly using for editing, you know, uh, and then helping uh, in, in research. So I do use ChatGPT to assist um, my students, uh, especially um, undergraduates and uh, and as well as some some postgraduate, usually uh, for master students. Right? Uh, do you have this uh, experience whereby when undergraduate students or sometimes <laughs> master students comes like? Okay, I would like to do research uh, with you. Uh, they say it. Then, uh, so what you have in mind? <laughs> what you have in mind? So sometimes they say like so, some keywords only come out. For example, uh, in my case, I just use this as an example. Yeah? So I, I, I would like to do in maybe in Sacha Inchi, uh, maybe about germinations. So uh, hold on, yeah. Oops, I try to. Share first, right? I I need to um, restart my my webex first. Um, just waiting for me to re, to restart my webex. Can Dr. Safia uh, just continue first? Uh, uh, All right. Sure, sure. All right. Come back, eh? Promise. <laughs> I will run away. <laughs> okay. Come on. All right. uh, okay. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Safia, okay. Mic, this mic loud and clear. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Nur Fadlina. Um, my name is Safia. I'm a part time lecturer in PPIB UMS Cal. I teach uh, year one and year two students from uh, Safia. You may want to put on your camera. Okay, okay, thanks. Actually, I already turned on, but my uh, it, it's taking some time to, to respond. Okay, no problem. No problem then. Thank you. And I'm back. Okay, and then uh, um, my students uh, from Faculty Kewangan and uh, Faculty uh, Computer and Informatics. So I teach both um, from science stream and um, arts students uh, i first used uh, chat gpt for uh, my lecture um, just for a general q and a session because um, um, my my course is uh, media in society is quite um ada ada istilah-istilah yang mungkin baru ya, pelajar ini hadap uh, dengarkan orang baru belajar so ada istilah yang maybe asing asing daripada orang punya bidang pengajian therefore i i explain the these um, terms and concepts with their definitions and then i ask them if they understand and I, at the same time i also ask them to use chat gpt to, to um, explain more about the 
the concept or the term. And then ChatGPT actually uh, provide them with ex example for uh, better understanding. And that is very helpful for, I mean, I think for the personalized learning for my students, sometimes um, not 100% are focused, right, during um, lecture. So they can uh, check later, check their, their the, the concepts of via chat GPT. And it is a uh, very personalized to their own interest, their gratification, their understanding on the topics that I cover during lecture. But uh, I want to um, mention here that I, I use chat GPT, even though it is very useful, I use it only occasionally, occasionally, not, not all lectures, are not, not in all lectures i uh, me and my students using chat gpt i think uh, so far it was very helpful uh, chat gpt and all the, ch the chatbots the similar generative ai technology is very helpful for the wait, wait a second um my my browser is um, loading. Okay, very helpful for academic productivity, especially in writing or for research. Uh, I also use ChatGPT. Um, I mean, since as far as I can remember, uh, since January or February this year, that time I was uh, assisting this uh, research in. Uh, this content analysis research here yeah, about the news about uh, Sulu Air's claim against Sabah. So there are hundreds and hundreds of news uh, reports that I need to analyze. And then um, it takes me only five news for me to burn out, start to burn out. And then I ask uh, the principal, principal researcher to, if I can use ChatGPT to help me summarize those news. And then uh, when I use ChatGPT, ChatGPT also actually um, do the summarization very quickly. And it is very helpful for me to meet the deadline for our research. It, uh, so I really am thankful for that. It saved my, uh, saved my time, energy, and uh, resource for research process. And I also, uh, as, a, as a freelance uh, writer so use this uh, gpt to generate ideas uh, ideas for content creation and uh, uh, what to say in presentation right before then what, what can i do to uh to do presentation properly gpt can give this uh, generate that uh, show us the ideas the this um number of uh, information that we we still need to select uh, not all information can be used we need to selectively use the information that is generated by uh, this AI chat. But uh, basically, it is very helpful and then for academic productivity, for writing tools. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I save time very, very much, for, uh, especially to generate uh, documents. Okay, ChatGPT helped me to gen generate multiple documents from scratch. If I just uh, type in the prompt, uh, help me write the, these letters or emails to uh, certain people. And then it writes very politely, very, very clearly, co coherently. And uh, it can be used, but uh, we can still sense the synthetic, uh, synthetic tone to it. And we can manage the, the synthetic tone of ChatGPT uh, by writing uh, the, in the prompt in apa write a an email in very friendly manner we can change the, the this uh, text that is generated in chat gpt uh, from our prompt it is very uh of an engaging experience for me uh, because it helps also in many other writing writing 
a task such as um, generating this concept paper punya kerangka uh, buat struktur macam mana buat um, I also submit this uh, apa ni bab dalam buku ni dan menggunakan AI chatbots dan dia this technology is very helpful uh, for for the for the lectures uh, I get, get this feedback from my students what what kind of uh, question that I need to ask to my, my students I get it um, the idea from asking uh, chat GPT also. I also um, experimented with GPT to come up with a uh... Well, Shafia, we cannot hear you. Are you able to hear Dr. Nar Fajula? No, I think uh, we lost her, huh? somehow. Okay, yeah. I think you probably will have to follow up with Dr. Ashwan now. Yeah, sometimes you know, connectivity and bandwidth is a problem here in Sabah. Okay, I also switch off my video. Uh, okay, hopefully that will benefit everybody as well. Is Dr. Ashwan around? Yes, I'm around. around. Ah, yes, I'm ah, around. Okay, ah, uh, you do yes. lah, lepas tu masuk balik, Puan Sapia. Okay, tak? Okay, sure. All right. So can you see uh, my screen? Yes. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. Maybe mine is mine the one that I share. About perhaps uh, basic things, but I'm sure here uh, there are uh, colleagues that maybe have not using it. So I continue with my talk with my students. So uh, it is important for us to engage with the students. You know. Um, like uh, not the no Fadina just mentioned just now that uh, it's more like we are facilitating the students. So perhaps when they ask about me my, my example my uh, work that uh, the student would like to work in such a inchi a type of plants and also would like to work in germination. So uh, perhaps they want to learn. So they just ask. I think this is everybody uh, can write the prompt. I think the important part for ChatGPT is the is how we interact with with uh, ChatGPT. Uh, I I don't have any uh, what do you call that. Uh, uh, I don't receive any lessons that I just play around by myself and experimenting the technology. So, for example, you can, a student can just ask uh, what type of plan is such a inchi, something like that. You know, they 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 can give us. Uh, at least some some assistance uh, for the students uh, to write, but always uh, check with them uh, that they're not copying 100%, that we can check that as well uh, with other, other applications. For example, as well, sometimes uh, we ask questions. I do ask questions sometimes. Like they, will, they want to work with germinations. Let's say, what are the importance of germinations? I'm sorry, seed germinations seed germinations in agriculture, for example, right? So, uh, yeah, that ChatGPT can give uh, instantly some of example, but then uh, it is us uh, with the students, you know, try to go along with the list and see uh, what probably are reasonable and what are probably not. And then, uh, so I asked the students since they uh, she, she, for, the students would like to do something on germinations. So perhaps what are the what are the um, problem or what are the factors uh, that influence uh, seed germination? Right? Okay. So uh, things here, yeah, right? Water, temperature, okay, there's a list of things down there. So we can discuss with the students. Uh, regarding all the things that listed down here, so let's say it's like uh, in 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 my case, like uh, we already know that such an inch is uh, seeds is a uh, hard seed. They have a coat. Their seed coat is very hard. So probably, and we also found that uh, I use semantic scholars uh, 
uh, with the students to find, let's say, uh, such an inchi nations here. Yeah. All right. There are a few things uh, about such an nations. We particularly interested on on this this uh, what do you call that this paper. So I already uh, downloaded it. So we found here that there's a sentence and there's a premises that says that well, such a inches seeds have full viability, low germination rate, lower disease resistance, and blah blah blah. So looking back at ChatGPT, so what probably uh, the students are interested probably can uh, look at the factors that can improve the germinations of such a inches. Uh, let's say the students choose here, uh, let's seed coat hardness. Probably we can remove seed coat from such a inchi then and look at the influence on the uh, influence on the uh, germinations. All right. Uh, Dr. Nufandrina, uh, you can stop me if I uh, talk, uh, if I'm taking uh, times, yeah? Right, so perhaps uh, after that, uh, I can ask the student just to outline the work, okay? Let's say this is just I'm uh, making quick things. Of course, there are plenty of discussions that, that, that we need to do. For example, okay, let, let's see, let's say is that your interest on the uh, effect of uh, seed coat on the germination of such a inchi. Let's come up with the outlines, all right? We can ask, uh, come up with an outline, a thesis. Just write thesis there on the effect of seed coat. Uh, let's say we want to remove them. Removals on such a inchi germination. Germination, all right? Okay, so that's the the outlines, all right? Uh, that can help the students, right? Uh, perhaps to look into it. So this is this is where we come in and uh, you know discuss with the students to see what the things are probably that that. Uh, we should do and check again what are the things that are necessary uh, for the students to go into further. And then, of course, uh, the things that probably uh, the students need to read about. Okay. Um, there's one in the chat uh, that I think Dr. Abu uh, mentioning about reference. Yes, I do agree with that. Let me show you. There's uh, something that is quite uh, risky or dangerous regarding uh, asking references from, from ChatGPT that me and my students are already aware about this. Let's say that uh, we ask, uh, provide, for example, provide five related reference on this. Okay. So uh, ChatGPT come out with, um, with reference. But I'm sure if we go and find all these references given, these are fantasy. <laughs> right? uh, anything with uh, DOI, I think nothing with DOI. With DOI, we can check immediately. For example, something like this. Let's see. I don't. I don't think there it is. Okay. Let's find this. No. <laughs> all right. There's nothing, there's nothing, uh, the reference that's been given by ChatGPT mostly is, uh, uh, what do you call that? It's just a makeup. ChatGPT just make up the references. So it's better to find, uh, like uh, mentioned by Dr. Nufadrina, to find references, not by using ChatGPT. They will give, uh, these are all fantasies. I can rest assured. If they give DOI, sometimes they give DOI, you can check DOI by using uh, DOI org. So something else, something else will come out, all right? So no reference from ChatGPT, perhaps using other, uh, other AI. Uh, usually I use semantic scholars, but then that will be some basic people using it. And I think Donald Vatina will show others. I heard about something about Rabbit just now. <laughs> okay, so this is a thing usually that uh, I talk with the students uh, for their initial work. And then mostly I use as well for 
uh, for um, paraphrasing or checking the students' writing because uh, I would like to concentrate more into the students' content rather than um, getting headache fixing the, uh, their writing. All right, so the student can do the, what we call that, anything by themselves by using ChatGPT. For example, uh, let's see, this is a very basic one, okay? This one is good enough, but still, you see that some say run out there, uh, no capital there. If you read that, not that very elegant, all right? Uh, paragraph here, all right? So we can use that. The, the important part is the prompt there. The, the prompt that usually I use is rewrite uh, the paragraph. So what usually we would like from a, a, a scientific article should be, should be like uh, concisely, con, concisely, all right? What else? Uh, maybe logically, <laughs> something like that. Uh, perhaps uh, what are things that usually for scientific paper probably uh, pre precisely <laughs> or whatever that we can write there. Um, so it will just help to make the paragraph a bit elegant, such as she sits from Rana well obtained from Rana. We can we can uh, edit that later on. Uh, two sets of seed were prepared, one with the seed code. So. It, it gives better options uh, compared to the uh, previous one that the students uh, wrote before. So if students can help with this, so it is easier for us you know, to check the content so we can give more time to the content rather than uh, taking too much time and in editing the sentences. However, however, this is considered uh, a good sentence already, yeah? But something like this, this is this is also from students, all right? If we if we read this, it's just that like uh, the 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 sentence that is the content is everywhere, you know. Uh, it's not probably construct uh, paragraph uh, that talk about such an importance, and then suddenly here talk about oil composition, blah blah blah, and then uh, it's it's not a good uh, paragraph with good uh, construct. If we put this. We do the same. Uh, we write the paragraph uh, concisely and logically. <laughs> right? Even though it probably uh, fixed the grammar and so on, if you go and read uh, the sentence, it's still, you know, uh, it's not a really composed paragraph. So. There's a certain limit that ChatGPT can do or ChatGPT cannot do. Even though sometimes I play around like uh, reconstruct, <laughs> reconstruct the paragraph, all right? Yeah, okay. Maybe a bit better than compared to previous one, but then there's still that uh, I do agree and very, very much uh, agree with that we have to go and check uh, again, uh, but at least uh, probably less time uh, taken in terms of, of editing. So I think uh, that's how I use uh, ChatGP with students. Uh, basically, it can do whatever Sometimes Quillbot does. <laughs> I do find it uh, because it's free, right? Uh, Quillbot that we need to pay. Uh, well, I'm, those uh, expert probably knows probably Quillbot maybe do better. But then, uh, for those who would like to find something that is free, then uh, I think ChatGPT uh, is enough <laughs> to help to edit uh, the writing. Uh, be, be, and then uh, so we can concentrate on the on the content. All right, uh, Dr. Fadrina. All right, thank you very much. This is very good. Uh, we also received several questions in the chat, Dr. Azwan. Right. I would yep. like to ask your experience, yeah, because from your demonstration just now, uh, you used ChatGPT. You demonstrated how we can um, 
how you encourage the students to come up with better writing based yeah. on some of their original idea. So yeah. in your experience, did you firstly ask the students to firstly submit some thoughts or ideas and after that you ask them to elaborate what was that the steps that you taken yes it needs from the student first not coming from me or from chat gpt at least they have some idea first and then they can you know do searching and get assistance from from chat gpt mm, this is great so i imagine this is where the mentoring happens the coaching you maybe ask the questions um at large to the whole class or you sit down together with your friends you ask them you discuss first and then after that you give them the students time so um, just imagine rather than we just give them one instruction no direct interaction with the students so you took effort to firstly listen and encourage the students and also filtering and guiding them to what could be these valuable thoughts that you want to be extracted or you want them to express, right? Yep, yep, yes. Okay, so this uh, hopefully can answer and also uh, inspire to other uh, members, uh, the audience today. Um, there were also some questions regarding, uh, maybe if you can share with Azwan, in yep. your experience, uh, how you detect the originality and and in your opinion would this lead to unintentional plagiarism and any other concerns that you have right. as you use ChatGPT? okay uh, i do concern about plagiarism as well as uh yeah mostly plagiarism uh number one uh i do have a thought on let's say like okay we, we write something you know and then we want to publish it then we're going to send, if we have money, we're going to send to proof uh, readers, right? The one that who going to, you know, to, to fix our uh, writings. That uh, I feel the same as well. There's, there's some accusation like, uh, well, you ask ChatGPT to edit. That doesn't mean that uh, like asking somebody to write for you, right? Even though it's uh, like just fixing our sentences and you know, our making it more elegant and more better. Uh, for people to understand, well, that would be the same as well as if we send that to a proofreader, right? And then we have to pay money, all right? Uh, so ChatGPT uh, just help in a simple way, just to help with fixing the grammars. And then the, the important part is the writing styles, you know, the, the writing styles that sometimes lack uh, recently I see. But then I, I've been myself uh, using it to, to, to check my writing as well. But then after, after a while, after I use it, then we can understand already, like there are certain patterns, you know, that sometimes we don't need ChatGPT to help us in, in you know, in uh, constructing sentences because we already have like a few times, you know, asking ChatGPT uh, to, uh, to make the sentences better. So, that will become an exercise for the students and as well as for me, you know, to, to create or come up with, with better sentences. Uh, to check students whether they're going to, that, that the writing would be 100% from ChatGPT or not, that will be difficult. But if I can share, hold on, yeah. Uh, let me share again. Uh, there is uh, one tools. What do you call that? I have here already. It's called GPT zero, right? That uh, we can check the writing, whether the writing is from uh, AI or human, something like this. And this is one that already been corrected or improved by ChatGPT. So we can put it there, right? And check. Well, short paragraph. Uh, most probably not will not be detected, but I'm not sure whether it's the paragraph if panjang, eh? but this one is originally from students, so it's just been improved by ChatGPT. Sometimes this this tool will not catch. Let's see. See, the the tool doesn't catch as long as 
the writing originally from student and been improved by ChatGPT. If the writing is from ChatGPT, uh, it, it will definitely will be catch. For example, maybe let's say uh, explain uh, the some factors influencing influencing seed germination. Let's try that. Okay, let's copy this. <laughs> let's copy that and put in our GPT zero. Oh, can I find? Sometimes, if I think it's because of the list, uh, it becomes a list, but if it's like a paragraph, Definitely, this GPT zero uh, can uh, what do you call this can catch at least. Dr. Natalia, I think that's that's all from me. But it's very difficult. Very uh, yeah. Yes, very difficult actually to detect. I've been writing also in the chat. Um, so uh, I would like to suggest that we need to balance rather than being investigator. Because we don't want to invest too much time for us to do this detecting stuff, no. right? It is more important for us to redesign the assessment. If you notice, there is one very valuable part that Dr. Aswan has shared just now. She invested in the time to listen and to encourage and to be able to elicit original responses. So we can do some intermediate uh, assessment submission like the students giving drafts of what they want to do usually in my opinion i uh, usually use the forum and i would create a template uh, for the students to fill up their thought idea especially for project and assignment they have to fill up they have to submit in in, in very short time like uh, one day or, or two days uh, for them to fill in also who are their members, they submit in the forum and they need to express and need, they need to comment with each other. So this intermediation process allows us to detect the original and fresh um, reflection from the students. And after that, baru dia orang focus lah on documentation. Sebab ayat panjang-panjang tu documentation. That's why if you notice in my slide just now, uh, there is suggestion for us to focus, um, not to hide at the back of, uh, not to hide behind lengthy reports, but rather focusing on uh, critical points, discussion and reflection. All right. Uh, shall we now? Thank you very much, Dr. Azwan. We will thank see you. you again in round two. I would like to visit, I would like to invite uh, Sapia now. Are you on the line? Yes, I am. All right. So please continue. Glad that you are back. Okay, thank you, Prof. I'm not sure when when my um, PC start to free, freeze just now. So um, but I basically shared about how I got I used. I said GPT with my students, mostly for uh, sharing and discussion uh, during class for the terms or concept that they need uh, further elaboration and uh, examples that they can understand on their, in their own uh, understanding uh, and also based on their interests. So it is very helpful for personalized learning. Kan? ChatGPT is very helpful for for uh, personalized uh, learning, uh, and also enables the, the student to uh, evaluate and analysis more uh, information from there for the, the discussion. Uh, they do discussion with uh, in in group. So uh, these AI chatbots uh, is very helpful for them to 
uh, construct the, their um, discussion, give them the the idea, and for for that purpose, uh, I think using ChatGPT is very practical and uh, useful uh, as long as they use it uh, responsibly, right? Uh, responsibly use it uh, properly to get the benefit from it. What we don't want is they copy paste the answer from uh, AI chatbot, from ChatGPT, and other uh, tools, because it will they will not learn anything anything uh, by copy paste. Uh, and also, I talk about the limitations of uh, ChatGPT. ChatGPT is not up to date. Yeah, it the, this free version, the GPT 3.5, uh, very limited features also. The training data only up to uh, September 2021. So uh, for very current events, uh, it has li it can offer uh, limited uh, discussion. Also, I'm not sure about this uh, inaccurate information. Uh, it because it generates the text based on our prompts, right? So uh, we we can we, we need always to uh, verify. I also also remind my student to uh, do the fact check and uh, verify the information that they uh, get from uh, Chat GPT and chatbots, uh, chatbots. This is the uh, major concern about using ChatGPT it, it, because it does not provide uh, pro proper citation. But for uh, certain other uh, chatbots like Perplexity, uh, it does provide the resource we can uh, verify the, the information. And also about this uh, hallucinating or of ChatGPT fabricate information. It sounds very uh, convincing if we don't uh, do verification. So uh, it is important for uh, my students to know about what they are writing. Get the, the information of only, they can only use ChatGPT for, to get the idea and for the discussion, but the details they still need to uh, study, they still need to uh, look further because uh, the text generated in ChatGPT is not the final product. Okay, okay. it is not, uh, it, it can't be used to uh, replace their, it can, the, the text generated by ChatGPT is not used uh, for assessment. It is only for, uh, to help them in the writing for the assessments and also help them in the discussions. And as for me, I uh, also get these um, drafts uh, to get the feedback from, from my student. Uh, I ask ChatGPT what kind of question that I need uh, to ask my students uh, to get the feedback of to improve my teaching and ChatGPT uh, uh, actually generated very very good questions that I can use some part of it but not all because it is based on kesesuaian juga kan tengok compatibility juga the uh, text yang generated to um, Tidak semua lah boleh di uh, limitation chat GPT ini tidak semua boleh digunakan, uh, di, diambil dan kita masih perlu uh, buat rujukan lanjut. We still need to verify the information. Uh, but as long as you use chat GPT for uh, properly or for a good uh, purpose or for, for research and for uh, boosting academic productivity, 
it is very helpful. I found uh, so far it is very helpful um, for content creation and presentation also. Um, because my screen froze, I cannot share my slide. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. I think uh, that is all for my sharing. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Masafia. I remember that you have given me the link. Do you want me to share for you? Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm loading it. All right. Let's do this. Can you see this? Oh, not yet. Okay. Yes, we can see your screen now. All right. Okay, now. So, uh, it is basically uh, how I sum up the, how I use uh, ChatGPT this semester because last semester, uh, the use of ChatGPT is not as popular as it is uh, this semester for uh, uh, for me. Okay, I use it for interactive lecture or Q and A like mostly. This okay. Thank you. For, for this example, um, I think the content generated in ChatGPT is it has no proper citation. So it we still need to find the reference ourselves. And the second one is the the resource is not exist, but because but I think this one is because of my prompt. I only uh, ask for it to show the example. Only the example. So this this one uh, the reference here is not does not exist actually. So we might need to be careful. Okay, my students need to be careful about this. Okay, thank you, Prof. I think that is all. All right, great. So thank you very much for sharing your experience. Uh, actually, in my plan, uh, we shall go for five minutes break. But since the time we just have about 30, mi 30 minutes before we end, um, so I would like to firstly invite for open mic and we can serve the break if possible. Uh, anyone wants to share any concern, uh, any sharing, please feel free. Silakan, anyone? Any question? Okay, uh, Prof. Fong, uh, we skip the break right here, Prof. Fong? Yes, Dr. Norfachina, we skip the break. <laughs> yes. All right. You can continue, okay, you can continue, much. yes. Okay, sure. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share uh, some specific examples to talk to uh, the sharing earlier by Puan Safia and also Dr. Awang. Um, in UPM, uh, last time we have released this guides for educators to embrace ChatGPT in activities. So, how to do it? First, you have to create a discussion um, on the rules of its usage. So this is where you can uh, tell your students what do you think is okay, what do you think is not okay. And um, in your sessions of lessons, practice retrieval and other memorization activities. Um, and you can specify certain time, topic or activities to make sure that your students really were there. So that means, imagine, uh, some students might take advantage um, on having this chat GPT and maybe uh, some students because there are many colors of students some of them might say why I have to come to the class I have chat GPT now so 
uh, a way for you to um, keep them to be motivated and focus in the class is to conduct this kind of pop-up quiz, can ask them to relate with uh, some certain time or topic or activities and, and the point is to be more collaborative and uh, to discuss activities. Sure, some students may look up for quick answers, but for them to carry on in conversation, let's say you assign them to be in a group, for them to continue, they need to have their own thinking, how they can recap and share their reflections. So um, this is more than ever important of uh, the importance of why we shouldn't be teacher-centered, uh, instructor-centered, should be uh, student-centered should allow the students to be engaged in personalized elaboration, like example Dr. Azwan tadi. And uh, you can require the students to use ChatGPT to answer questions related to a topic and ex <coughs> experiment to identify questions that can't be answered. So if I can rephrase point number five here, for areas that uh, focus on writing, eh, some areas like linguistics, uh, like the perfilman, tu kan? Uh, and also areas uh, that require the students to come up with their own graph and, and long documentation, but you worry that the content is not from the students. So accompany this submission of uh, lengthy reports with having um, interval progresses. Let them to discuss and present in the course. So this way, the course will be more project-based. Um, this is a summary of my first experience when I use it, uh, ChatGPT, in my uh, class. So this was around uh, March. I gave these instructions in blue. Uh, the student's name here is not real student's name. Uh, you see, uh, then I, I analyzed back my instructions. I saw that, oh, this is really straightforward question. Provide explanation on them. So easily, the students, they copy paste it, they use the chat GPT, but then I realized when I asked them to present, they couldn't um, answer, even the questions are actually in their slide. So at that point, I know, uh, ni mesti you pakai chat GPT, you did not really understand deeply, kan? Uh, then the students, uh, I asked them to redo. I reassign the question, but I um, change a bit. Because the students kata, the uh, questions are tough, but they manage to complete it. And they are happy that I allow them to use ChatGPT. So to me, when the students are happy, they open up to really commit in the course. That is also very important, kan? Otherwise, students masuk dalam kelas kita, dia macam tak nak belajar je, kan? So now, they feel more confident. Uh, and they know that they also have to mix. Because at the moment that I hear them having to mix, having to choose ChatGPT, having to edit, having to refine, having to discuss, uh, dah sejuk dah hati I as, as pengajar. Because I know they make effort. So then I know which part sebenarnya dia dah faham, which part they, they uh, tak faham. And in my experience, when we did this exercise together, and and the students nampak masa tulis seperti panjang tu, tapi dia tak faham, then I terus smash dia orang. Lepas tu, cakap, oh, okay, so now you know which part you actually faham and you nak ke chat GPT to replace you as learner. So, kita boleh psycho them to be able for them to to understand to understand and be reminded of their role. I also use chat GPT in preparing questions, answers and rubrics. Ha, sama macam demonstration given by Professor Madia Dr. Awan just now, uh, we can put in question uh, like this, there is a topic. I ask, create question and answer. Ah, senang sikit lah. Uh, my work, we can specify further. Uh, if you want MCQ and if you want rubrics, we can enter it, we can get it. But in my opinion uh, and also my experience, I did not take as is. I trickkan sikit. So when the students tu, uh, diorang nampak, uh, sometimes student ni become lazy. So memang kita bagi dia buat open ended uh, assignment, open ended uh, question, I'm sorry, open ended assessment. Uh, some of them to get advantage. Uh, dia tak belajar betul betul kan? So when we put tricks, dia tak boleh, uh, tak boleh lah. We can we can still catch them. And as uh, Dr. Zombo cakap tadi, over the time you can see pattern. And in my experience also, student kalau yang rajin tu memang betul betul dia dapat. Student yang kadang-kadang berlakon macam kita, bila over at the end of the semester, 
I could still see my graph is quite the same. It's not much difference compared to the previous uh, semesters without using ChatGPT. So the point is, we want to produce students yang tahu menggunakan generative AI as a tool, not to replace them. So this is very important and we need to remind them. Uh, so even uh, I have asked the students, eh, uh, uh, there was one, one morning, cepat-cepat datang. Because at that morning, masa tu we were planning to to set for schedule for the students to present their project. I said, hey, you guys, I know you guys memang pakai chat GPT to create code. It's okay for me. But uh, did you really take it and copy paste it? Uh, you boleh terus execute ke? So they said they have to edit it. Kata, Some of them cakap, memang kena edit kata. Memang saya kena change. Lepas tu kata, okay. Because you have to remember tau. Ni memang, I, I tanya balik. Imagine, we don't want uh, the chat GPT to replace you. And at that time, I really purely have this concern. Because I said, oh, kalau anyone dah boleh tahu nak prompt uh, pakai chat GPT to create coding, nanti programmers dah tak ada kerja pula. Ha. So I had this uh, concern. And I asked the students, now you identify. Mana sebenarnya uh, the skills that can differentiate you from the other people who use chat GPT to create uh, questions. So now they understand, oh, sebenarnya betul lah, doktor. Because we go through this uh, course, we un we understand deeper. Uh, other people might know how to, kalau dia pandai prompt, tapi dia tak tahu sebenarnya the topic uh, deeply. So the point is, my observation, chat GPT becomes a catalyst for inquiry-based learning. For them to be able to rephrase, formulate, for them to think deeper, students become more inquisitive, sparking creativity and building deeper interest. So they know the boundaries, they know their strength, they know their weakness because they have to know also and be aware of the opportunities and threats and how a good programmer, because the course I teach too is about algorithm design and analysis, so other programming, they need to be able to identify how they can stand out even ChatGPT and non-trained programmers can generate code, code for it. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take opportunity to let your students and we also have to reflect on how this generative AI is now transforming the world around us and in, in our background. Sorry, I'm, I'm now sitting at the balcony because my kids just got back. We're going to check out soon. The students need also guidance and monitoring. So, ada bunyi kapal terbang sekejap. So, students need guidance and monitoring. Our job, still, we have to mentor them. We have to redesign assessments and activities. We need to be ready for agile teaching strategies. Uh, macam in my experience just now, I shared, we kadang-kadang, uh, soalan yang kita rasa macam dah okay. Alamak, rupanya kita buat senang sangat student nak boleh score. So, we need to change it. Okay, assessment questions. Because we don't want to end up marking chat GPT's answer. Ah, bayangkan, kita ni penat-penat ni. Ah, ni memang typical lah. Lecturer hujung minggu nak kena marking skrip kan. Kita tak nak kita pula yang kena spend time. Sebenarnya, kita marking robot punya answer. Not our students. So, this is when we have to redesign. We need to make sure that the students tahu what is the... Uh, border, boundary. So we can invest in the time to focus on the students being able to express. Sebab imagine eh, kalau dalam kelas kita, but I understand, kalau kelas yang ramai, kata kalau 80 and over, so for you to do this, memang you kena buat jadual and design soalan and this is the time kita ni kena lagi belajar pandai, pandai pedagogi dah. Uh, dah kena lagi pandai, kena <laughs> change it. And sebab itu saya cadangkan tadi, kena betul-betul pakai forum online dekat dalam your model tu. Pakai forum online to design it, to let the students to communicate with each other and for them to evaluate what each other has expressed. Okay, tadi kita ada a few uh, concerns about plagiarism and che cheating. So, this uh, infographics is now telling which part sebenarnya yang cheating, which part sebenarnya yang bot created. So now, the world is moving towards using AI as a tool and student leveraging AI to be able to come up with better writing. Kita pun benefit to come up with better writing. So, 
um, the boundary, we can ask the students to create multiple AI responses. Maybe sebelum ni kan kita pakai log kan. Kita buat assignment, buat projek kan. Kita ada progress kan. Kemaju, uh, progress, uh, research progress, project progress. Ask them to put in print screen and let them to write out their review. Uh, and from this, so we know lah. Sebelum tu tak adalah. Dia pandai pakai chat GPT, dia create-create soalan, copy yang hantar kat kita. Dia tak ada review, tak ada dia punya minds for inside. So, please do that. Uh, besides, ada yang kata tadi sharing about uh, AI detection in in Turnitin. So, this is an example of uh, how AI can be detected in in Turnitin. But in my opinion kan, dia kadang-kadang tak boleh detect. So, contohnya, ini example ya, I create pakai chat GPT. I copy pasted macam example Dr. Azwan tadi, I letak dekat dalam this apps. But sometimes dia tak boleh detect accurately. So how to do this again, kita kena change lah. Jangan hanya bergantung kepada uh, documentation submission. So hopefully I have made myself clear. Okay, if you are new and now you are interested to um, uh, take more advantage of chat GPT, consider refreshing. So there, there are prompts. Uh, feel free to print screen. I'll share also my slides with you all. Uh, that you can use this kind of prompts to create and to refine and to personalize. Sebab kita boleh answer, uh, ask dia dig further and further. In the guide that uh, UPM has released previously, practical uh, tips and show students understand. Collaborative activities kena buat. Engage with students. So sebenarnya sama lah macam saya cakap tadi. Boleh buat unique case study, so specific dengan apa-apa perkara yang berlaku around you and let the students to be able to tell why they choose this problem and give reflection. So this way, they will be more alert and more committed on how uh, they and why they choose certain assessment. Okay, kita banyak dah cakap tadi, ni peranan pesyarah, peranan, uh, peranan educator. What about the students? In the MQA punya advisory note, there is also a section to the student. Pelajar perlu diberi kefahaman dan kesedaran berterusan bahawa AI generative adalah untuk menyokong pembelajaran tetapi, ah, this one is a magic word, bukan mengambil alih tugas mereka sebagai pelajar. Ah, ni penting, kena remind the student. Memang kena remind sangat student-student ni. So, uh, for the students, the biggest warning should be the facts cannot be taken as is. Students should question every piece of text that they get from an AI. So, if the students to newbie, and you can also eh, uh, see students yang yang take advantage, baru nak pakai, they use it, lepas tu they copy, uh, they don't tak faham pun mendalam. So, it is our job as we progress through the several weeks in the semester, we can um, interact further with them and we can be able to detect siapa student yang betul faham Siapa student uh, yang tak faham? Okay, this is uh, sharing. Uh, I share with you what my students have said uh, when they were interviewed uh, by TV3. And considerably, this student is from Sabah and he is an influencer. Jadi, I cakap dengan dia, uh, you can take advantage to to share with them. Sekejap, eh? Can you hear this playing? Can you hear? Dengar tak? Dengar tak Prof? No. Sekejap eh, sebab belum play mana dia. Patutnya kat sini. Okay. Can hear now? Boleh tak kalau saya play ni, you, you dengar tak? Dengar ke? Tak, tak dengar. dengar eh? Tak dengar. Dengar ke tak dengar? Sorry. No sound. Okay, kejap. I reshare. I reshare, share computer audio. Show me, turn on my video, okay. Alright, so see this now? Technology and staying connected. Due to this, coding is seen as an important job. Yes, we can hear. Various industries, not just in the tech sector, as more businesses are increasingly relying on digital solutions to adapt and grow in a new market. Even with the advent of generative artificial intelligence, AI tools, which can help non-programmers write code easier and faster, there is still a need to nurture tech talents to create a highly skilled and knowledgeable human capital for the country's future. Ali Yunus reports.
AI coding assistance and low-code, no-code applications have emerged as invaluable tools empowering those without formal training in programming to become citizen developers who can create digital solutions or products for their business or organization. This led some to question the relevance of learning to code. However, instead of dismissing the disruptive technology, the education sector remains optimistic and has embraced it with open arms by integrating AI tools into the curriculum to enhance students' learning experiences and skills. It is also unlikely that AI will entirely replace developers and programmers as human intervention is still needed to drive innovation and creativity, identify and resolve issues as well as execute more advanced lines of codes. Supporting students, we are the one that put the all the pressure and all the uh, our arts and our capability in the coding. Compared to AI, AI can do more of things, but it cannot do as 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 strong and as powerful and as efficient as humans. So I think that programming students still need to learn how to code and it's still efficient in the long run. Using uh, AI tools in learning to code is. It is still relevant to learn to code in with the AI full AI tools full in the landscape in the area, uh, but there would be some issue if you were to get the answer from the AI tools and you cannot rectify the problem it comes to get in the code. You still need the basic knowledge to rectify it, to fix it, and to actually use it. University Putra Malaysia UPM Deputy Director of Innovation in Teaching and Learning, Associate Professor Nur Fadlina Muhammad Sharif also concurred, adding that coding is more than just syntax and commands. She also highlighted the significance of human interaction and conversation in developing personalized and context-aware digital solutions. For us to be able to come up with an innovative coding to solve specific problems, we need human minds that is able to digest the problem, come up with a solution, model solution that's suited to that problem, improvise um, while the code and snippets that are being generated can help uh, in various stages of programming, um, can debug, can give us uh, ideas, but to relate to the specific problems and to connect one code to another uh, environment and another problem cannot be automatically done uh, without a human. So only a human knows at this scenario what is the best code, what is the best algorithm to use. She further pointed out that the ability to understand user requirements, develop personalized solutions and continuously improve the technology is an irreplaceable aspect of human programming. As for the National Tech Association... Okay, so why I show this is to um, inspire you to spend session with your student and people in your area to identify uh, what is the boundary what is the boundary of this um, AI? Would it uh, replace us? And this is more important than ever for us to focus on uh, human um, capabilities, communication. Ah, uh, sebab uh, if you uh, look around, kan? So sekarang the the country and also the world going towards digital revolution, uh, TVET. So. Um, we the, the country is going to produce even more than ever people who could come up with coding uh, but if you imagine uh, adakah by using this nanti kita akan uh, replace our um, our educators and also the the university tutup ah uh, kan and also we don't want a robot to to replace human totally so we need to identify which part actually still need human and what is the skill for us to uh, keep on evolving. Uh, a few days ago, uh, on June 30th, uh, a few days ago juga lah, uh, Harvard have released that they are now going to use AI formally to help teach computer science courses. And and in this, uh, kalau tengok, kita uh, pun menggunakannya and there are uh, worries that AI will kill these jobs and jobs that are now being transformed sebenarnya already eh, at other countries, jobs that relate to digitalization. Kat Malaysia ni kita baru nak produce. 
So uh, sebab itu the concern I identify just now. Our country ni nak produce ramai kan ramai-ramai ni pula TVET ni orang dah henti buat programming kan tak dapat kerja pula. Betul ke ChatGPT ni cannot replace? So that is why constantly the TV3 has uh, interviewed us and we were discussing about that in the morning memang kebetulan sangat Allah nak tunjuk so we focus um, on on the importance of the uh, chat gpt um, generative ai not to be replaced by human uh, i would like to invite uh, ni second round ya dr azwan dengan uh, puan safia ada nak tambah apa apa uh, nothing much i think uh, well sometimes during the busy time uh, I do use ChatGPT as well, like uh, Dr. Fadlina. Like, we want to give them some quick questions to the students after classes. Can just ask ChatGPT to come out with upper MCQ questions. But always, always uh, read back because the answers given sometimes are not according to what we understand. I think we are the human should should look into it. And and as well, I remind. I remind many times to my students that yes, uh, ChatGPT can help you, but you have to read that. You have to read them back because we are the human, we are the biologists in, in our case. Sometimes, sometimes this is just a funny uh, and lighter part. Lah. Sometimes if I find like ah, there's some emails, let's say, uh, come and then I don't have time. I sometimes I just ask ChatGPT to write. <laughs> Take the emails, you know. So it's funny. It's just a funny part. Sometimes uh, it can it can uh, answer emails as well. So I just uh, found it astonishing that how this technology can can help us. Yeah. Don't worry, Dr. Azwan. Let's use it all the time as long as it's free. Unless if you only pay, use yeah. it all the time. Okay. Yeah. So let's that's all. Sophia. That's all. Yeah. Are you done, uh, yes, just a little bit, uh, Prof. Fadlina. Uh, there is about uh, about using ChatGPT. I will to encourage them to use this uh, technology ethically. Use it uh, to help them solve problem, not to create one. Uh, to help them learning or get new information, and also because. It, uh, there is a bright future for this technology, right? Because it already, um, the Stanford and Harvard also come up with this uh, study that uh, found 40% professional writing task actually improves by using ChatGPT. This means that ChatGPT helps reduce the inequality between higher skill uh, writers and uh, lower skill writers. This is very helpful for the future of our students if they use this technology properly, okay, properly for good. And therefore, for us too, for, uh, for the teachers, we should also embrace this technology and also the other, um, make use of the other emerging technology, you know, IoT. But for uh, AI chatbots, uh, ChatGPT is very uh, practical. Uh, well, yeah, well, while it's free, we can make use of it, uh, uh, maximize the benefit we can cre create from it. And also, we, we, we can take, use it in moderation, like it, it not to abstain from it totally and not to use it uh, extremely. Use it in moderation uh, to uh, get the benefit. And then, because we know uh, it has this um, risk also, we uh, have already uh, discuss, discussed it. And um, for me, uh, as media studies, my main concern about this technology is that it generates text in form of information that might be uh, might, might create this misinformation and disinformation. And that is, I uh, for me, I always remind my students to uh, verify the information, uh, look further, don't. Uh, uh,
Freeze lagi ke tu? Safia, are you around? Yeah, I think probably we lost her in connectivity. Okay. I I continue dulu ya sebab tadi I janji ada a few uh, new uh, a few new apps I want to share uh, on besides chat GPT ya. So kita skip juga this one due to time. Okay, generative AI for research purposes. This is the last round. Just now uh, we got questions regarding how um, and 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 the complaint lah sebenarnya uh, chat gpt cannot generate and and give false links okay please consider to use other applications as i have put in my slide here perplexity size space so size space ni dia punya website type set.io please look at it uh, at the moment these are still free but i know and and constantly in several of the sessions that i have conducted many people eventually subscribe to this uh, many apps. Tapi sebenarnya myself, I, I, I belum subscribe lagi. Although I rasa I selalu sangat guna chat GPT. I ask the chat GPT using uh, to to answer any questions that come to my mind. Uh, now it is better kalau ada spouse, I dah kahwin dah kot dengan dia. Memang, memang bercat-cat lah dengan dia sekarang to get to get uh, answers to many of my questions. Okay, perplexity, please consider to use it. Elicit pun okay, size, size, uh, size space pun okay, research rabbit pun saya akan, uh, saya akan tunjuk sikit. Quillbot, uh, you can install as a plugin in your word. Okay, please consider to install Quillbot. Kalau tak pun boleh pakai uh, online paraphrasing tools. And why this is good? Because they can automate paper summary. Ah, senang. Kan banyak-banyak tu, walaupun kita ada abstract, but sometimes... The writing tu mungkin a bit berat, complicated kan? Somehow the summary in my experience, summary yang generated by this AI is much more for public congestion, uh, consumption. Uh, better sikit untuk uh, our consumption. They provide also links to related papers. They provide also questions for us to dig further. Auto generated, generated questions. Uh, so for students sometimes kan, especially yang new, baru buat master kan, dia orang tak ada idea. Kita suruh dia baca, dia baca. Lepas tu kita tanya, apa you punya review? Apa kelebihan, kekurangan? Comparekan paper tu. Kadang-kadang rasa macam lah. I bagi you spend masa tiga minggu, banyak ni je you buat. So now, you can encourage your students to use this kind of apps for them to come up with better review. And as uh, Safia cakap tadi, to to make them to to become better writer. Uh, boleh paraphrase, boleh generate code juga sebenarnya. Okay, so chat GPT boleh generate code. This one ni, you all semua dah tahu. Uh, example eh, uh, questions. Uh, senang je boleh how to develop it. I ada pro, uh, I ada project on uh, ecology simulation, ecology simulator. So, uh, atas ni adalah series of other questions. I ask it um, because I kadang-kadang nak check. Yang I rasa betul, my intuition tu betul ke tak betul? So, I use it. Oh, maknanya betul lah. Ni contoh lain. Uh, I use... Uh, I test it whether it can create ke a synthetic data set for me. Kalau I collect data, kena macam mana. Uh, so, it can also do that. It can also generate code. So, kalau you boleh buat coding or you can design on what are the questions. So, probably nanti uh, tak lama lagi akan adalah kursus-kursus yang lebih uh, mendalam untuk transform uh, scientists in many areas and also social scientists in many areas to start to be more, uh, to reform, to be more digital. Okay, Perplexity. This is another apps, apps number two, Perplexity. It is an answer engine. It uh, provides comprehensive and accurate answers. It encourage follow-up questions. Ini memang macam chat GPT. So, kalau you tengok, uh, dia, kita boleh ask question. And then, so this was the question that I type out. And it will generate uh, results and we can click lah. Uh, and it will give answer which it summarized from all these resources. So these resources are legit. This is to answer the weakness of ChatGPT. So these links are all useful links. Please go to Perplexity to try to use it today. All right. And also from this, boleh juga uh, ask follow-up questions. Kenapa saya letak dua ni? Oh, okay. Uh, next example, I rasa. Uh, more example here. The third app, sorry, I have to be quick sebab kita sampai pukul 12 ni. Size space. This to me is an LR assistant. It automate paper summary per paper. 
Yang tadi semua kan ha, Ni per paper Auto generate questions ha, Cuba tengok eh This is size space Type set.io So we go here This is how it looks like And then you type You enter Tengok Dia summarize kan From top 5 papers For each paper Keluar inside Keluar juga Apakah dia punya Summary from each of the paper Lepas tu Sebelah kanan ni ada co-pilot Co-pilot ni Dia will list Apa lagi questions ha, Ini bukan hanya kita Become inquisitive Dia Socratic kan lagi kita Allowkan kita Encourage kita Untuk dig further ha, Boleh klik je kat sini So bila kita klik Klik Dia akan keluar Terangkan lagi ha. Lepas tu kita boleh Ask pula uh, question Macam ni saya tanya List example of Machine learning models mention Dia bagi answer So senang Memang ada robot lah uh, Kalau kita tanya research assistant kita Biasakan ambil masa So this becomes our Additional research assistant Lab demo uh, You name it Okay The fourth apps Elicit It can uh, provide Summary of the abstract Provide custom questions And add info This is how it looks like You boleh masukkan question Boleh tekan search And then it will give abstract summary But ini I dah rank according to yang my recommendation So satu chat GPT, nombor dua perplexity Nombor tiga tadi typeset Nombor four elicit Elicit ni kenapa bagus? Sebab dia ada setiap satu And then boleh filter, sort by, boleh export as Bila you click the paper You provide ni, dia provide to you abstract summary Ada pula, can I trust this paper? On the right side boleh baca So this hopefully can solve also and can encourage us to go towards open science uh, and then open access as well. Possible critics, lepas tu ada custom questions, uh, other citations, uh, so very good lah. App number five, researchrabbit.ai. So researchrabbit is a literature mapping tool. It is different such that it does not answer question. But it provides, okay, ni paper ni, paper ni link dengan paper ni. Ah, uh, Ni pun bagus kan? So kalau student kita tak cover paper-paper ni Kita suruh dia cover paper So these are the apps that you can consider Site, tadi kita nampak ada someone Has already subscribed to this uh, Site.ai So site.ai is known as the chat GPT of science So if you look at it It is very similar to its to chat GPT interface And you can ask question in it It also has um, extension Chrome extension to put site.ai Because kalau kita ambil this extension Bila kita search something, you right click, boleh ask uh, site.ai assistant and you can get answer. So in conclusion, I'm really going speedy here. My reflection based on my usage for one sem. ChatGPT provides personal support to students 24-7 available tutor. So kita jangan jealous lah kepada the ChatGPT but we need to take advantage also on it. We just still need to have good foundation in the area. Again, kalau orang tu bukan area tu, dia nak tanya soalan tu, soalan dia takkan boleh break. So this is where uh, at least the students need to know how to uh, prompt basic questions and then go deep in the question. Students need to be taught on how to be responsible learners. Listen to their reflection, motivate them. Lecturers need to unlearn and relearn. Effort still counts for big time. Uh, ni important. Students yang tahu guna chat GPT as a tool uh, in quality productive learning Struggle gain multiple times benefits Sebab diorang akan really understand mendalam So take away message By automating tasks that are time consuming and repetitive Chat GPT and generative AI Allows research professionals to focus on what they do best What we need to be focusing Creating new knowledge and exploring new ideas Rather than kadang-kadang kita nak baca student punya submission ni stuck Sebab bahasa kan ha, So uh, allow them to create new knowledge and exploring new ideas So innovation, so the words innovation ni memang blinking here and there Because of the capability, schools needs to rethink how to evaluate the students learning In a more dynamic way As opposed to static, summative assessment or submission of essays And emerging competencies to be resourcefulness Educators role is even more important now The students need to be able to be resilient uh, So kalau sebut uh, proof, uh, apa ni? Proof, future proof students Ah, So now is more important than ever Kalau rajin nanti boleh baca This policy AI and education By UNESCO but actually All these yellow mark uh, Sentences highlighted The importance of humanizing This tag, not to replace this tag Okay Silakan ya, saya ada buat satu kursus Kursus ni free, please feel free To uh, join this course Boleh, boleh scan dia Ya, dekat dalam platform Putramuk, you can go in, you can get badges 
uh, you can learn about micro uh, you can learn about machine learning for educators also inside so that's all from me thank you okay prof kita saya serahkan pada prof lah untuk invite any last questions thank you so very much dr Lawrence Wasrina and to dr azwan as well to prof safia okay since uh, it's mentioned by our invited speaker uh, is open to anyone who might want to throw in a burning question. In I mean, want Eugenia or anyone? By the count of five. Kalau plagiarism student 99% tu, tu bukan student. Itu robot tu yang patut diberikan award. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. yeah we have our students as well because I show them that they can basically analyze and discuss the results. Then I said, if you do this, then why you are here? <laughs> we are the one who need to analyze and discuss. <laughs> Okay. Boleh tak Prof? Satu dua soalan je Prof. Saya I... nak kena check out. Yes, <laughs> can I yes, ask yes. that please? Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, it's a question more concerned. Your name, uh, please mention your name and uh, where are you from? My name is Dr. Hassan Jamil. I am from uh, Faculty of Computing and Informatics in UMS. Uh, yes, Dr. Hassan, yes. So, my, my concern is that the language is an important part of learning as well. Like suppose if the student properly does not understand the language, then I believe that might have difficulty to learn as well. So uh, using these tools, a student can generate the assignments or, you know, the write the essays and these uh you know the generated things so my concern is their ability to understand the language or to read something and understand what is the paragraph about it might be degrading in it, it is my concern so what do you guys think about this allow me to respond firstly uh thank you very much for the uh, concern dr Hassan. i remember myself having this thought when I firstly use it, but then over time and when I uh, prepared for several other sessions similar like this, uh, I look around. Um, memang the, the world is now going towards uh, an emergence of new skill, prompting skill. So this prompting skill really closely related to the correct terminology and being able to understand what we want the robot to be able to do. Uh, so in this sense, uh, for someone to be able to get the utmost benefits from this tool, they need to know what is their goal. And imagine, uh, of course, um, it will be difficult for the students who does not have the correct language. They don't know the, 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 the terminology. That is why this productive struggle comes about. And they still need to have some effort. How to use these apps? and to keep on interacting with it, refining the prompts until it matches what he or she gets. And it is not as easy as you just use it and you get satisfied. This productive struggle will require you to at least have some basic in that area for you to get benefit in it. Uh, in my experience, I uh, am currently uh, conducting one project which is not in my area. It is on biodiversity and I'm a computer scientist. It is very difficult for me, as well as interesting for me, to discover new, new terminologies. And that is why I got addicted to it. I have to dig further. For example, uh, I have to ask, um, how does ecology simulator relate with machine learning? Then the answer will be generated. I ask again, uh, explain to me about um, what you said just now. Um, make it simpler. Then, if there are certain uh, terminologies that caught my attention, uh, elaborate this for me. Give example. So, this is where we use these apps to guide us as a personalized tutor. And from time to time, we rebuild our understanding. And this would distinguish one student who
who put effort, productive struggle, leveraging your eye to learn with somebody who does not care. So hopefully that would answer you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, only okay. one more, please, if possible, Lars. Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Uh, saya Mas daripada Universiti Malaysia Perlis. Boleh dengar ke? Boleh. Yeah, okay. yeah, from Perlis. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I have two questions uh, for a prof. Okay, the first question is some some students may feel that okay in order to to avoid that uh i'm i'm using the chat gpt um or the ai generator to to help me out with the thesis uh, writing for example uh, instead of asking in bahas uh, in bahasa inggris so uh, they would ask in bahasa malaysia and they they uh, take everything and put it in uh, in reverse language, which is in uh, Bahasa Inggris. Ask in Bahasa Malaysia and write again in Bahasa Inggris and then all vice versa. Just to avoid that, you know, the detector can detect that particular, you know, using the chat GPT uh, as it is. Means that they are not really rephrasing the, the sentences, but instead they just take up. Okay, that would be uh, one question from me. How how can we, uh, you know, um, uh, detect this kind of work? Uh, okay, that's one. My first question. My second question is: Is there any possibilities that the Chat GPT, the or, or the AI generator, give uh, inaccurate um, what we call information? For example, uh, for uh, uh, the new. Uh, the new uh, discovery of knowledge where the data from the you know from the the clouds may not have uh, much information on that but when we ask uh, the the ai generator may give us inaccurate answer is there any possibility of that kind of uh, things uh, prof thank you for the two questions uh, thank you can you repeat the second one uh, is there what is it before yeah yeah is uh, uh sometimes when we we, we let's say that we, we are assuming that we are new in that particular knowledge for example if i'm uh, i'm a statistician uh, my field is more on the classification part so i might know some of the methods which is uh, i know well but sometimes i may not know uh, in detail certain other methods which classify under classification so i if i do not know the whole thing about classification and then i ask the ai generator and then i ask something and then is there any possibilities that the information given by the ai generator is is not accurate as it is means that there will be something not right with the with the information given uh, especially if there is a new uh, area of that classification part where the the data is not really um, uh, comprehensive in the in the clubs you know dia dah dia tak banyak information tu di 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 dalam uh, di kita punya dekat alam maya kita lah maknanya bila kita tanya uh, AI generator tu mungkin dia pick sana pick sini information yang dibagi tu mungkin tak tepat is there any possibility that lain kan Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Um, I will try to give uh, another perspective. Okay, ni last question. Um, apa ni, uh, try to give another perspective. When we are involved in any, uh, kita menuntut ilmu kan, um, we sometimes kalau tak ada the software, we rely on our supervisor. Sometimes ada juga inclination, betul ke yang supervisor kita cakap? Kan? So the point is that's why when we do research, we have to rely on many sources. Um, AI, generative AI is not a solution to everything. It is a tool to complement. Uh, and it is still our job as a researcher to make sure that the answer is accurate. That is why we need to also refer to other resources. And if it is new, what even, even more for us to check its authenticity. So that is in short to tell that we cannot rely 100%. We can use it as an initial. That is why for brainstorming, concept classification, but to really take it as a Bible or as a Quran, I think uh, we have to still handle it with precaution. 
uh, your earlier question uh, was on translating to I think you can invest time in that but I would suggest to maybe occupy uh, and utilize that opportunity and also effort the SLT effort of the students to focus on on the specific um, attainment outcome you want from the course rather than than just spending time on this translation kan lebih baik for you to focus on something deeper boleh lah nak translate tu because by the way chat gpt can also uh, respond in bahasa melayu boleh eh? even in dialects so i don't think it's really wise for us to spend time to do that too much uh, but we can do it and uh, i hope that answers thank you very much uh, prof Fong, i really need to to run um uh, and that's all from me, yes. uh, Dr. Azwan, and also Puan Safia. Last words from you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Prof. Okay. So, once again, I'd like to say a big thank you uh, to our Dr. Noor Poslina, Mohamed Sharif, uh, our Dr. Azwan, and also Puan Safia for the very interactive session. And I believe Every one of us uh, have been one way or another been motivated and inspired to explore the use of generative AI to enhance our academic productivity. Uh, the attendance list is in the chat box. The PowerPoint slides, I believe, uh, Dr. Norfasina, will you be sharing your PowerPoint? Yes, yes sure. Uh, yes. So we will be sharing it to all of uh, our lecturers here. You don't mind? Yes. Yes, yes, sure. also, no problem. Yeah, thank you. And the recording will be shared through our e-learning coordinators to all the faculties and institute. And we would like to remind that we will be sending out a Google form of a survey concerning this particular uh, webinar. So please respond accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end, and I'd like to uh, say a quote from John Davy, and that is this. If we teach today's students as we were taught yesterday, we rob them of tomorrow. So there is a need, our, my dear colleagues, and it's sort of a word to me, that you know, we need to reinvent ourselves. And generative AI is one tool that can reinvent us to make us and keep us relevant. And moreover, there will be an important uh, guideline on the use of uh, generative AI coming up somewhere in October, according to Dr. Norfaslina. So may we continue to guide and educate our students to be full of honesty and integrity in the use of generative AI. Okay, we say bye-bye and thank you for your time here with us. Dr. Azwan, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih. Yeah. Terima kasih. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you.